again we are adding one more employee with name kevin and email kevin dot test at the rate yopmail dot com and then age as 30 and designation as qa engineer and then click on save and in this video we are going to see how to create a spring boot project in intellij idea so if you are a beginner to intellij idea then this tutorial will help you to get started with the spring boot and intellij idea so for creating a spring boot project in intellij idea so go to your intellij idea we have already opened it here so after going uh, to the intellij idea click on new project and after clicking on new project there is a option of spring initializer in the left side menu so click on that and after that entering some name here so here we are entering spring boot spring boot demo with intellij idea so this is the name of the project now next is the giving the so next is the language so here we are going to create it in java language so we selected java here so also we are using maven here so if you want to build it in gradle then you can choose gradle from the type so now in group uh, we we give uh, we will give the name uh, we give the name as com dot spring boot dot demo spring boot dot spring boot dot dot demo so in the artifact so make sure there is no space between the name so here we will enter the name as ring demo intellij idea okay so here name is so long so we will remove it and we will give the package name as com dot spring boot dot example and here uh, we have a uh, we have jdk 11 installed on our system so we are choosing jdk 11 here but if you have uh, another java version under jdk installed then you can choose that so since we have a java 11 installed on our system so from uh, java we select the 11 as from uh, 11 from the options but you can choose 17 or others version uh, as per your uh, java version that you have installed on your system so from packages we uh, keep it as default so click on next so after clicking on next there is a option of choosing the dependencies so from the dependencies first dependency that we are choosing in spring boot dev tool and then spring web then spring web so click on spring web and then click on create so after clicking on the create it will take some time because it will download all the dependencies and sub dependencies for your project so wait for the some time while it download all the dependencies for your project so meanwhile uh, it is installing all the dependencies let's understand the project structure so in project structure uh, here we have a source main java and inside uh, this folder structure that is source main java we have a our main class that is spring boot demo with intellij idea application so this is the our main class and this is the main method so as we know the main method where the uh, execution of the code comes at first so next is the uh, 
resources so inside resources we have a static template and application dot properties so if you have a specific properties according uh, to your project then you can mention that in application dot projected suppose we want to uh, change the server port we know that default port is 8080 but if we want to change that then we can simply add here server dot port and we can mention our custom port here but uh, for now we are going with the default port so inside static we can simply mention uh, the our uh, we can simply add our ui files so that will be uh, read from here and inside test if you want uh, if we want to test if you want to write the test cases for our project then that goes under the test folder so in the inside that we have a uh, test class spring boot demo with intelj id application tests and so this is the mainly uh, used for the structure and let's go to go to the pom.xml and understand our dependencies so first dependencies that we add is the spring boot starter web that we choose while creating the project and dev tool also we choose it for while we are creating the project and then other dependencies are there and the spring boot version uh, that we are using for creating this project is the 2.7.3 so and java version is 11 so all the dependencies and sub dependencies are successfully got installed so let's add one controller and test our project then so first we will create a new package uh, inside existing folder structure and in controller we will simply add the controller that is hello world controller so inside hello world controller we simply add one method and inside that method we will test our uh, code so that is we mark it controller as at the rate rest with with the annotation at the rate rest controller and simply we will add one method that is public get message get welcome get welcome message so inside that we simply return we simply return welcome to intelij idea and spring boot and we simply forget to add the return type for this method so we will add it and we will mark this method with get mapping and inside mapping we simply add the message and inside we mark the controller with the general uh, request mapping that is hello so with the hello so we save it and now time to test our code so let's test our code and run this code and so our project got run successfully and tomcat started on port 8080 so as we know that in spring boot uh, we have an embedded tomcat for the uh, spring boot project by default so port uh, tomcat started on port 8080 and no active profile as where well our pro uh, project uh, we not configured any uh, profile so fall back back to one default profile that is default so let's test it by going to the browser and hitting the request mapping that we have created in our project that is hello and then message so after hitting the request mapping that we have created in our project we successfully get the message that is welcome to intellij idea and spring boot so it means our project Uh, successful got successfully created and also it work uh, it's working fine so yeah that's all for this tutorial 
hope you guys uh, are like the tutorial and uh, hope you guys like the tutorial and able to understand this basic concept and also able to learn how to create a sample spring boot project with intellij idea also if you have a actuator configured then you can see all the bins that you have created in our application what all request mapping are you have created and then health of, of your application so yeah that's all please do subscribe our channel so that you cannot miss any further updates from our side yeah thanks for watching guys in this uh, video we will learn how to create a employee management system using spring boot and time leaf so if you don't know about the time leaf then don't worry we will discuss what is time leaf first and then we will see how we can use time leaf with spring boot and by the end of this video tutorial you will be able to answer how to use time leaf with spring boot and how to create an application using time leaf and spring boot so let's start the tutorial with the basic introduction of time leaf so time leaf time leaf is a server side java based template in template engine for both web and standalone environments and it is capable of processing html xml javascript css and even plain text as well so we can say that it is more powerful than jps and responsible for dynamic content rendering on ui and this engine allows a parallel work of the backend and frontend developers on the same view also it can directly access the java object and spring beans and bind them with the ui so if you have question how uh, it access the java object and bind it with the ui then don't worry we will learn that in the upcoming parts of this upcoming part of this video and also uh, time leaf is mostly used with spring mvc when we create an any web application so yeah let's start with an example to understand how time leaf works with the spring framework so basically uh, to understand how time leaf work with the spring uh, framework or with or, or with spring boot let's set up a project first so go to your id i am using uh, intellij idea here but you can use eclipse as well so yeah click here on new project and then spring initializer and then give it name employee management system and here com dot employee dot management dot system and here package name is so long so we will make it simple and short employee management com dot com dot management dot employ or simply we keep it as com dot employ and then here from here you can use the jdk so we have a jdk 11 on our system so that's why we are choosing jdk 11 here and since we have a jdk 11 installed so we are choosing java 11 but you can choose according to the uh, environment that you have uh, according to the jdk version that you have installed on your system now next is the packaging so keep it as default for now so then click on next and from here we have to choose dependencies so let's understand first what all dependencies we need then we choose from here so yeah so here uh, as we uh, know that we are going to create a employee management system so or um, and performing the crud, op uh, crud operation on employee data so basically employee management application uh, employee management system application have four features mainly 
uh, adding a new employee to the application reading the existing data of the application updating the existing employee and deleting the em uh, existing em employee if we want to delete so for building this we have to add certain dependencies which are which are listed here so yeah so first dependencies that we need is spring web so basically spring web dependencies is used for building web application including restful application and basically uh, it has the MB embedded tomcat in it as well so let's add spring web web then and after adding spring web next dependency that we need is spring data gpa basically this dependency is used to persist data in sql stores with java persistent api using spring data and hibernate so we need spring data gpa as well so we will add spring data gpa as well and after adding spring data gpa we need spring boot dev tools basically this is this this one is not mandatory basically it provides a fast application restart live reload and configuration for enhanced development experience so you can add it or if you want to skip this one then you can skip this but we are going to add its spring boot dev tool so after adding this we need mysql driver so we will add it as well so that we can perform database operations successfully so we will add it as well mysql driver and then we need time leaf because here we are using time leaf in the ui side so we will uh, we will add the time leaf as well so basically uh, if here is a small description that is server side java template engine for both web and standalone environments and allows html to be correctly displayed in browser and as as static prototypes so let's add time leaf as well so we will add so now you can see here we have all the dependencies that we require for creating our employee management system project so let's click on create and after clicking on create it will download all the dependencies and sub dependencies for your project here you can see downloading share indexes for maven library and spring boot 2.7.3 so basically uh, spring boot uh, version that is that we are using in this project is 2.7.3 and it is downloading all the dependencies here you can see that resolving maven dependencies so meanwhile it is downloading all the dependencies let let's discuss what we want to achieve next so this part is complete that is project setup now let's create a classes that we need for creating employee management system so first one is the database configuration so database configuration for that we have to add common database related properties in the application dot properties file and that are basically what your database name is and what is the database password and what is the database username and how you want to fetch the details from the database so let's add the database configuration in the application dot properties file So go to your application dot properties file that is under the folder source main resources. So in the application dot properties file, we need to add spring dot jpa dot uh, 
properties dot hibernate dot dialect so this one is the this is the first property that we are adding and value for this is actually this one so let's add other properties as well so let's add in this way so that it not give us any issue so make sure uh, whatever database name you are giving here you have that database created on your mysql as we are using mysql as a database here so let's open mysql and create this database will be opening my sql and create this database create database student management okay it is giving us error in our sql syntax so let's try to okay so make sure you don't have any hyphen in your database name so give name as sorry it is not student management it is employee management system database created as employee management system so we need to replace this here employee management system and then we need to mention other two properties that is that is related to the logging level of sql so let's add those as well we will add one more property that is related to the ddl and that is this one that is spring.jpa.hibernate.ddl auto equal to update so that's all about the database related properties now let's go to the next part and next part is the create employee class so we will create a employee class so go to your java folder then go to java class oh before going creating the employee class we need to create a package that contain our model or entity so inside model we will create a employee class so basically employee class we will mark it with the annotation at the rate entity as we have to map this with the database table and then we will create the fields first field that we are creating is the id because every employee have id and is our mark with this with the annotation at the red id and then as it is our primary key and then generated value basically this annotation is how we want to generate the value and generation type will be identity and then next is the name every employee have name as well then email
then age and then designation of employee and then we will generate a getter setter for this so for generating getter setter we will generate a getter setter for all the fields okay let's undo that and generate it let's undo that and generate it after our all the fields so let's click on generate then get a setter and okay now all the getter setter are generated successfully and we will also generate true string for this method as well then click on generate then click on to string and it will generate a to string so here we have created a employee class and let's create a employee database as well sorry employee table as well use employee management system and then create table employee id as begin id as begin then name as fair care 50 email as fair care 50 then age as int and then designation as again fair care So let's execute this and our employee table employee table created successfully so let's test that select star from employee so here you can see that our employee table created successfully and currently uh, it since it have no data so select star from employee return empty table so this part is also complete let's move to the next part next step and that is creating employee repository so since we have to fetch the data from the database so as per the mbc structure it is mandatory that we have a repository for every uh, class that needs to be interactive with the database so let's create a repository package and inside that employee repository and let's inside that we will create a employee repository repository employee repository and mark this with as repository make sure it is as interface and extends this with existing jpa repository so that we can use all the functionality of the jpa jpa repository and we have a class of employee type and and long so import this as here
and after creating the employee repository next part is the creating the service so let's create a package as service then create a interface that is employee service so now question here is, is what all uh, different method is there for fetching all the data and performing all the CRUD operation related to the employee so let's discuss what all method this employee service contain will contain so basically this employee service interface contain these four method so first one is the get all employee and this have a return type of list of employee because it it is used to get all the data of all the employees so next method that uh, next method contained by this interface is the save method basically this method is used to save new employee and then there is a get by id and delete by id so get by id is used to get the data employee data based on the employee id and then delete by id is used to delete the employee data based on the id so let's move to the next part and adding all these method in the our uh, uh, let's add uh, add all these method in the employee interface so that is first one is the list of employee and that is get all employee so let's import the list and then next is the void save and basically this method is used to save the employee data in the database and next is the get by id and this method is used to fetch the employee data based on, based on id and it is long taking id as parameter then delete by id and again it is taking as id as parameter so let's add a class to implement this interface that is employee service impl so basically this class implements the employee interface and and add logic for all the add logic for all the methods that we have added in the employee service so let's click on implement method and we need to implement all these method here so first thing that we need to is is to inject the employee repository here so let's inject employee repository here and employee repository and after injecting the employee repository we can make use of all the functionalities that are present in the employee repository so first one is the employee repository dot find all because this method is basically used to get all the data that present in the employee table next next is the saving for saving we again making will make use of existing method of jpa repository so here we are also making use of uh, existing method of jpa repository so here we are not adding nothing uh, advanced concept just all these steps are very basic and simple so let's add null check here so that if we get null 
so that case also got handled and then get by id then we will use again find by id method of jpa repository for this find by id and this so make sure you will get the id non null id here if id is null then this method gives you exception object dot non null id then we will execute the code of this so basically here we will make use of java 8 optional class so optional employee optional employee then employee repository dot find by id and id and declare the employee as initially employee as null and if optional employee dot is present then only we will set the data to this optional employee dot get otherwise we will throw runtime exception that is throw new runtime exception that is employee not found with the id and id we will print in the exception and then whatever we get we will return that simply here okay so we need to move it move out of this so that we can get it throughout the method okay we copy it and paste it here so this is the implementation for the get by id method now next is the implementation for the delete by id method if objects dot non null id then we need to execute the employee repository dot delete by id and id so basically this is the implementation for the delete by id method so next is the controller level changes so let's add up new package for controller and then we will discuss what all api we need to expose here so since we are done with the employee service and its implementation now let's move to the controller so next part is the create employee controller and expose api method to perform operation like get all employee data save new employee and delete the employee etc so basically our employee controller have these five method so basically the method that uh, we are going to map with the default mapping is the used for viewing home page where we display the all employee data and then next is the uh, method with the request mapping add we will add this with the mapping add so this is used to open the page for adding new employee in the application then save and this is used for the adding newly added employee in the database okay so if you are confusing between slash add and slash save then simply slash add will open the um, open the uh, ui form for saving the new employee and slash save will be called when um, user fill the uh, adding new employee form on the ui and then click on save then, then slash only slash save api will be called then update form will be used this mapping is will be used to show the update form and upon clicking we again making use of employee uh, again making use of uh, saving data uh, saving 
save method or uh, save method to save the employee and then delete delete will be used to delete the existing employee so let's create a controller class and add all these mappings employee controller and mark this with add the red controller and <coughs> then add employee service and now next part is the adding all the mappings and their methods so first will be the default mapping and let's add that get mapping with the mapping slash then public string view model or we can simply <coughs> show the view home page so by clicking on the by clicking on the home page url you will basically you will be calling <coughs> okay so whenever user hits the base url then our application calls this method so let's create a model and import this model and then model dot add attribute that is all employee list and we will be using get all employee method for showing the data of the employee and then return index so by returning index means we are returning the index dot html page from here so next method is the add again since slash add will be for showing used for for showing the create new uh, adding new employee uh, form so that's why it is get mapping so let's add public string add new employee and it is again taking model as input and then employee so since this method is used for creating the new entry for the employee so we will be sending the empty employee object on the ui and there when user fill all the detail and click on save then this employee uh, on then this employee have all the values and we will be make use of this in the save method save and next is the post mapping that is used, used for saving the employee in the database public string save employee and at the rate model attribute employee and basically this employee have all the data that we are required for saving the employee in the database and then employee service dot save so basically here okay yeah here we have null check so no need to worry so now open employee controller as well and then return so here we are after adding the new employee in the database again we are redirecting to the index.html page 
that is we are returning from the default mapping now next is the get mapping and basically for this we have a mapping of update form and we are accept accepting id in the path param so again this method is used for returning the update form on the ui so in path variable we are taking in path variable we are taking value as id and since means we are taking the id in the path param and basically based on this id we will send the employee object to the update form on ui so basically employee employee service get by id and then model dot add attribute employee and employee and return update so return update simply means we are turning the update dot html page from here and next is the again get mapping then delete and again we are taking the id in the request param uh, path variable here public string delete by delete by id and again in the path variable we are taking id so taking id in the path param and then simply call the employee service dot delete by id and pass id to this method and then simply return the home page that is our index.html page so these are the four methods that we require so mix okay since this is a delete mapping since this is this method is used for deleting the employee from the database okay maybe you have a question that we are deleting the employee from the database here and then why we are marking this as a at the rate get mapping so we are marking this as, as at the rate get mapping because we are returning the home page from here so that's why we are marking it at the rate get mapping so now we are done with the all the backend changes now next is the ui changes so let's see what all ui changes we are we will make next so in ui layer changes basically we will create three main files first one is the index.html that is the file that we are returning from the default mapping so this is the home page of our application and we will show the all employee data in this table and then in then next is the add employee.html so basically this is the page for adding new employee and then update html so this is the page for updating the existing employee information so let's proceed further and create a index.html page so so let's go to the source main, source main resources and then templates and then add file home page file that is index.html and inside index.html let's add the static content of static content of our 
वेब पेज एंड देन फॉर द बॉडी वी विल एड कोड एंड स्टेटिंग कॉन्टेंट वी हैव डायरेक्टली पेस्टेड ओके सो हेयर यू कैन सी दैट दिस इज दिस इज बेसिकली आवर होम पेज एंड कंटेनिंग द बटन कंटेनिंग द एड एम्प्लॉ एक्शन एंड ऑन एड एम्प्लॉ वी आर रिटर्निंग फ्रॉम द एड न्यू सो बेसिकली आवर मैपिंग इज स्लैस एड एड न्यू आई हैव एडिड बाई मिस्टेक सो लेट्स एड कोड इन द बॉडी सो इन द बॉडी वी हैव टेबल रो एंड ऑन टेबल रो वी विल एग्जीक्यूट फॉर लूप ऑन एम्प्लॉ दैट इज ऑल एम्प्लॉ लिस्ट सो बेसिकली दिस दिस ऑल एम्प्लॉ लिस्ट इज द ऑब्जेक्ट लिस्ट ऑब्जेक्ट दैट वेरी वी आर रिटर्निंग फ्रॉम द कंट्रोलर एंड दैट इज दिस दैट इज दिस वन ऑल एम्प्लॉ लिस्ट सो कॉपी दिस एंड गो टू द इंडेक्स डॉट एस टी एम एल एंड पेस्ट इट हेयर सो आफ्टर पेस्टिंग इट वी विल बी एडिंग डेटा टू द टेबल कॉलम्स फर्स्ट वन इज द एम्प्लॉ नेम एम्प्लॉ डॉट नेम so basically we will copy this and paste this for other columns and make changes in this second one is the email third one is the age and fourth one is the designation so that's all and next is the for the action so for action we will add a mappings that is for first one is for update that is update form and we will pass id this to this and for id we will be adding id like this employ id and then in this way and here we simply add update and for a better ui we will add bootstrap class to this so if you have a question how this bootstrap class will work then you can see that we have added a bootstrap from we have included the bootstrap here so similarly we will add a for the column this one is the for the update and this one for the delete so in this we simply add delete then id then employee dot id and here we will mark this as delete so we will save it so this is for the deleting the employee so till now you you may have question that we are writing the code continuously and will it work so let's try it by running the application okay so it is building our application and okay here we are getting exception that access is denied for the user root at the rate local host using password yes okay open able to open a jdbc connection for ddl 
so we are giving the exception getting the exception here and let's see our application dot properties why we are getting this issue okay so basically our database password is root root not simply root so let's try to execute this again by entering the correct password okay now you can see that after adding the correct password our application up successfully so let's go to the browser and try to hit the base url okay so you can clearly see that the the uh, home page of our application that is index.html opened successfully since we have no we don't have any data in the employee database so that's why it is showing empty now so let's go to the development phase again and stop server for now and add a code for adding the employee add the code for adding the employee in the database so basically from here we are returning employee page so actually it it will it it should be add employee so because we have to add a page with the same name on ui so click on add employee and copy this and then create a new page with the mapping add employee dot html so and from here we will add a code for the adding the employee in the database so again we will copy the static part directly that we have handy because for saving your time we are copying this from the existing source that we have okay again it is not okay now we will check okay so save employee and then we will create a form because some of the code we directly copy pasted from our existing source because here we have because it it is a static part and not contain any logic so that's why we copy paste it and then we will add hrf tag for submitting and then adding a class button button in four width as column two and then name as save so basically this button okay by mistake i have added it as a anchor tag but it should be button so this button is for basically saving the employees copy this cut and enter it in your form so basically we have four fields in our employee class so we will add input type text th field so basically th field is that we are uh, is the time lift content so we are using is using it from directly placeholder name 
and class form control four and column four. So we will copy it for others fill directly. So it is for email. This one is used for age. This one used for designation and email age and this one is place to the is for the designation and in the form on action you mentioned that it will go to our backend and in action we will tell it to call our save backend api method that is marked with the save mapping then th object that will be keeping this all this data is the employee and then at last we will add a anchor tag with mapping of home page basically we are adding an enter tag here that contain default mapping and so the index.html page that contains the all employee list so save it and now try to up the server again so our server up again successfully and now go to the browser again and refresh the page with default mapping and then click on add employee so you can see that add employee mapping successfully called and open the add employee page so let's add one employee robert robert codes up at the rate gmail.com and age will be 25 and designation as software engineer one and click on save okay so request method get not supported so upon hitting it we are getting 405 so why we are getting 405 because we haven't mentioned the method type in the our code so let's add the method type here so that it will call our backend successfully so stop and rerun our server again and try by adding data again so now again clicking on save again it is giving 405 so let's refresh this page and try to hit the okay okay again it is giving database return no negatively generate identity value the database okay so something wrong with the backend so let's check this what is going wrong with the the database return no negatively generated identity value okay so let's go to the database and try to check what happened there first we will observe the log okay i think we haven't mentioned the id as a primary key and due to this this issue occurring so 
let's drop table employee and then try to execute it again and then check it again describe employee and now it is primary key okay and now trying to hitting the page again by adding the values let's see it will open all the value or not okay again could not execute statement exception occurs so let's see why it is occurring again now field id does not have a default value okay so again we are facing this issue because this don't has default value so default will be null so again we will be dropping the table and creating it again in world default value id okay now let's execute it is executed successfully and go to the browser again and try to save the values again we are getting the same exception let's see what's wrong with the now with the default and the field id does not have a default value okay so again it is giving field id does not have a default value so let's check our table So let's drop the drop the employee table again and try to execute this. Okay, so now let's check describe it auto incremented and now it has a so now let's go to the now let's go to the UI again and try to enter the data. So now you can clearly see that we have successfully created one entry in the our employee table now let's add one more tom tom dot abc dot at the rate top mail dot com and age 28 designation software engineer 2 and we will add one more entry that is Kim. Okay, as a Mitchell Mitchell dot course up at the rate your mail dot com. Then is twenty five designation as software engineer two. So again, this entry will be solved. Okay, delete button should not be in blue. It's it is a delete operation so it should be in red so okay we will change this in the index.html page button button to danger okay it is not getting reflecting okay so i think we need to update resources stop and rerun okay after i think after starting the server again it will take ITS and turn off the debugger and click on press on f8 
ओके सो वी विल स्टॉप इट एंड क्लिक ऑन रनिंग द सर्वर अगेन एंड देन गो टू द एप्लीकेशन एंड देन वी विल चेक द होम पेज और होम एप्लीकेशन सो नाउ डिलीट बटन इन द रेड सो लेट्स इंप्लीमेंट द फंक्शनैलिटी फॉर अपडेट बटन एज वेल गो टू अवर आई डी ओके बिफोर दैट वी विल चेक अवर एम्प्लॉय डेटा बेस एंड हेयर वी कैन क्लियरली सी दैट नाउ इट कंटेन्स थ्री एम्प्लॉय डेटा सो नाउ नेक्स्ट गोज टू दी नेक्स्ट पार्ट इज द इम्प्लीमेंटिंग द फंक्शनैलिटी फॉर द अपडेट बटन now go to the new file and add a new file update.html so in the update.html basically we will add a form and that form keep the user data and update that data in the database so basically this is the our code of employee table for employee uh, for updating the employee data in the database so let's rerun our project again and check whether update functionality is working fine or not so refreshing the page and click on update okay again we are facing issue because something wrong we have written in the add employee table sorry no add employee form so open your add employee form and okay not add employee form but index.html page so in the index.html page we have update form and then id and then id equal to employee dot id so i think everything is correct here nothing seems to be wrong but we need to check why this is showing like this so go to the browser and then we if we see local host at the rate okay it is not resolving this part so this is i think issue update form and then employee dot id okay so this is the issue and id equal to employee dot id but if we directly trying to hit like this update form slash 3 then it will open the page of updating the employee data but we need to figure out why it is not showing it here so yeah problem is identified the issue is we are using normal href tag not a time leaf tag so now let's trying to make it is as earlier and try to hit and then we stop and rerun it again and then we will check now go now go to the so now open the browser again and hit the base url and on base url click on update and suppose we are modifying the age and saving it so now you can see that the age of michael is 24 now again we are adding one more employee with name kevin and email kevin dot test at the rate yopmail.com and then age as 30 and designation as we engineer and then click on save and now click on delete because we need to test our delete functionality 
as well so click on delete click on delete will delete the employee and then we can click on adding the employee again so that we can check it again our add functionality again tension tension dot codes up at the rate e of mail dot com is as 25 software engineer one so it is again and then we are modifying the email and then checking the email as in and then we are deleting the tom as a send this is deleted successfully so now if we see there are only three records in that table so if we check our database then it should contain three record only and here there are three records only so yeah that's all for this tutorial